Hey everybody, it's Those Guys, and today we are doing another episode of Doctor Who Wednesday. I'm Matt, and I'm here along with... Your friendly, interdimensional space and time traveling construct, Tristan. Excellent, excellent. So we are talking about uh, Doctor Who, Series 12. Can't believe it, it's gotten this far. Um, I love it, but my god, time yeah. moves on, Tristan. Uh, and so must I. Uh, we are talking about episodes 5 through 8, so Fugitive of the Jadoon, Praxius, Can You Hear Me, and The Haunting of Villa Diodati. I can't, like, not say that with a hint, a, a tinge of sexual flair. Like, what? The Haunting of Villa Diodati. Like, no, you can't do that. The Haunting fair. of Villa Diodati. Um, so yeah, so these were actually a very good string of episodes. Yeah. Shocked I am. I don't know why I'm Yoda, but I, shocked I'm. Shocked you are. No, but I. In your methods I am. I, no, I, I am legitimately shocked. I mean, come on, we start off with Fugitive of the Jadoon, which. Yeah. Holy fuck nuggets. Yeah, I'm surprised. I definitely did not see their return. Well. Well, wait, hold on. It's it's everyone's return and everything that came from it. By the way, there's going to be spoilers in this for everybody. We're, I'm just I'm just waiting for Tristan to say it. Oh, am I? Say what his that? name. Say my name. Captain Jack Harkness. God damn it! <laughs> Holy shit, Tristan. Yeah. <laughs> say his name. You are. Are you his? No, Jack. Are you a no. his or a him, Tristan? Jack, yes! Yeah. I'm... So, I, I'm still freaking the fuck out over that. Uh, oh now... My. Well, because... The thing is, I'm assuming because of episode 8 and how that's going to lead into this two-part season finale, I'm assuming Harkness is going to appear again. I to say so. To say, Doc, you done fucked up. Damn it, you had one job! I gave you all... I gave three of you one job! Well, we told her, but she didn't listen. Oh, sounds like the doctor. Oh, well, yeah, alright. Nothing you could have done then. Yeah, basically. Um, <laughs> he would do that, too. He'd be like, ah, oh, well, you're right. Nothing you could have done. But no, I'm, I'm definitely curious in seeing where that's going to go. And of course, I'm assuming you can't. Even though... Uh, this has happened this season where they've kind of wrapped things up in a way that I did not expect in a 45 minute episode. I don't think they're going to be able to wrap up Dr. Ruth this series. So yeah, that's going to be very interesting if her story continues on to uh, to the next series of Dr. Who, yeah. assuming that Whitaker stays on, which there is nothing that to me suggests right now that we are leading to penultimate Dr. episodes. Yeah. So, I mean, by this point, we would have already gotten the next two Doctors uh, spoiled for us. And we only have one. <clears throat> so I don't think we're going to have... Well, you know, it's funny. All jokes aside, we don't know anything about Ruth, though. So we... And that's the people have been calling her online, Dr. Ruth. Right. Um, there is no... Which is funny for other reasons. But, um, it, but yeah, so people have been calling her Dr. Ruth. And I don't... People are saying, oh, is she a previous doctor? Is she a newer doctor? But it seems as if, according to her, at least with, what, you know, with how adamant she was about all this, it feels as if she ran the exact same, you know, uh, timeline as Whitaker's doctor, our 13th, <laughs> if I'm assuming that she's from or an alternate universe, let's say. One. What? Or that they've had similar experiences. Yes. We haven't, like, had her have a flashback or anything, but... It, you know, they would have, I don't know, maybe maybe I'm just overthinking it, but I feel like there would have been one thing. Yeah, it was a stressful situation, but, you know, they were very sure of themselves. Like, no, 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 no. We have, we, because of River, we actually have our own diaries and they all match up. So right. I'm pretty sure they talked about their dates matching up. Maybe I'm wrong there. I thought they were on the TARDIS talking about like, huh, that's odd. Or if not, they were, uh, the doctor told the companions later, I'm pretty sure everything matched up. So that was weird. Yeah. Yeah. But um, because that it's been it, it's funny, everybody. Usually I 
have an episode on in the background. I do, but with our new setup, with the way we record, I can't see the episode while watching it. So it's on, meaningless. Also, uh, when I usually I marathon all four in a row or something like the the yeah. minute before we go live and uh but t- uh, but this time i've decided let me actually because i really really was getting into the season of uh doctor who let me watch them week to week so there's going to be a little bit of fuzzies here and there uh any corrections if you're watching this what was that you don't lie to the audience matt i know what you actually do you start you don't do it the minute before we go live you do it the minute after we go live and that minute before when you're like oh i need to get a glass of water i'll be right there you jump in your own tardis go back in time watch the episodes and then pop back as the cast is starting up i do drink a lot of water <clears throat> uh so what was your f- sure it's not from mars what was your favorite episode i would never what was your favorite episode because i Ooh. yeah i know i'm hard pressed um, I think I can say what my least favorite is if you're thinking about your favorite. Okay. Uh, so my least favorite, and it's not its fault. It's actually a really nice episode for so many different reasons. But I think my least favorite is Praxius because we just had a similar episode in tone within the same series, which is very much like, you know, obviously anti-global warming push out that, you know, like that urgency on global warming i mean that's the vibe that i got from that one praxius was the one where it was the pollution all over the earth that was coming back to attack them like hey you guys use too much plastic and i was like no 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 super fair but we just had an episode even directly tied it into i believe they even had a talk about like oh my god but we're still really nervous about what happened a few episodes ago so to be fair you could argue that it's an overlying plot point but i don't think it's really going to have a resolution if unless the cybermen are also using plastics and co2 the plastic. i'm being serious no but i'm being dead serious unless they're somehow reusing plastic co2 or something along those lines they're coming at the end here really isn't doing anything to serve that narrative so it just felt like two very similar episodes in the same series uh one of the big differences is the romance actually be breaking new ground for doctor who which for the you know for us here in the u.s it's not breaking new ground we have a lot of friends in the LGBTQ plus community, but when it comes to Doctor Who, it's like, oh, thank God, you finally decided to fucking just show two people who happen to be of the same sex in the same room, interested yeah. in each other, where yeah. that isn't like the Doctor and um, and Jack, which to be fair, Jack is not human anymore. Yeah. But I always forget if Jack was, ever. I feel like he was one of, like... He's not human human, but he's one of those species that branched off of humanity. Right, right, right. Okay. Um well, like still yeah, like technically no, but technically yes. It's funny, because we met Jack in the past for the first time, my brain always says he was a man from the past who then got all of the timey wimey stuff and worked for the agency. It's like no no no. He uh, worked for the agency first. Yeah. And then he hopped around the fuck people of every age. Um <clears throat> Oh no! I mean, I'm just I'm being real here. No, Jack has yeah. definite. Jack I, definitely has a calendar, and every year he has definitely had sex with someone, probably on Earth. Yeah. Uh, anywho, that just goes through the list of all the Doctor's companions. Checks in. How you doing? <laughs> I don't know about the companions, but no, definitely companion adjacent. Yes. Maybe an aunt, an uncle. There you go. Just every one of them. Just I met the most amazing man. Was his uh, name Jack? Yeah. Oh, God <laughs> damn it. You, Jack, just like, uh, I just imagine just, um, oh, God. Uh, come on. Uh, I forgot his name. Uh, uh, crap. It's, it wasn't Rory because Rory was newer, but it was, uh, oh, he had a, he had another universe, compa- uh, like companion. He was, the, he was one of the first ever companions technically companions in new who mickey yes mickey thank you because he had ricky <laughs> right it was ricky wasn't it yeah no because mickey was from our timeline but then they also had an alternate dimension timeline whatever they had yeah, ricky or something he was the parallel universe yes thank you yes um but yeah no so i only mentioned mickey because i just imagine mickey calling him just hey jack jack 
Hey, stop snogging my nan. <laughs> oh God. He's like, well, I mean, we got to stop meeting like that. You oh. have time travel. Oh, I can hear him saying it too. <laughs> anyway, You're so saying it. God damn it. Have you have you had the time to think about your favorite or apparently least favorite episode if you're like me? Because I feel like Praxeus, not so much that it's a weak link, it's just that it's a similar plot thread. Um Yeah, no. I'm Yeah, I'd have to disagree. My least favorite's probably Can You Hear Me? Well, I mean you're empirically wrong. I actually wrote a five-page yeah, dissertation. Uh, <laughs> well, no, I mean, here's the thing. So I'm not going to say that you're wrong, but I'm hard-pressed to find why you're right. But you know what? We haven't talked about it yet. So please tell me why you, in your opinion, against my my facts, why you are correct. So I'm going to walk into that spacecraft right now, and I'm going to go, and I'm going to come back and wait for you to, you know, evolve your opinion a little bit more. So we Oh, can... I thought oh, I thought you just needed some time to actually think. <clears throat> Maybe some time to form your thoughts. Oh my god. Uh all right. No, fine. If so, <laughs> the thing with that's the thing. I don't hate Can You Hear Me? Like No, of course. Yeah, all these episodes I enjoyed. Mm. Um to me it's just the weakest one because I felt like I just felt like they dealt with those, like, they were two basically godlike beings, and I felt like they dealt with them too easily. Well, not they're not the dead. that they dealt with them wasn't good, like, wasn't right. interesting. Right. I, I like the fact that the, um, the other, the other girl that the doctor had picked up from the 13th century, 11th century, something yes. like that. Yes, no, you were right, 13th, yeah, uh, well, 1380. You know, she control of her nightmare and six it on the two of them being like, right. humanity laughs in your face, you think they're, you know, useless and afraid and can't do shit, well, here you go. Like, I love that. Right, and I think that's just what it is. It's just, it's one of those plots that we see all the time. Anytime we say, but how did, like I've said this to you before on different podcasts, I'm pretty sure we've been doing this for a while. Oh, yeah. come on, man. And you said, hey, man, hubris. Oh, yeah, no, and it's definitely part of their hubris. Uh, but, I mean, no, I think it was done too fast, but then what happens? Do we give it a whole nother episode? Because it definitely yeah. should not have been a two-parter. Right. I, cause, oh, I, I get that. Yeah. No, 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 but I... It's funny, though. I wish it, they would have had more time. They needed yeah. more time to wrap it up, but that doesn't mean that we give them an extra... Apparently, this was a 50-minute episode, so, like, do we give them another 50? Like, eh. Yeah, like, that would be the thing. I don't... I, I really don't know what I would change about the episode structure to, to make me like it more. And, and that's fair. Because, like, it was just... I, I loved pieces about it, and what I think I really liked more was how they delved into each companion and, like, their own personal fears. Like, That's why I hyped this up so much. I, yeah. The ending was weak sauce, but... Oh, God, I said weak sauce in 2020. <laughs> but it was. But it was. I've been watching too much of The Good Place. Uh, it, it was I... weak, though. It was weak. Right? And the Doctor introduced Vibe a few centuries earlier. And she's been saying that fairly recently. I know. I love um, it. Um, like when Ten comes back and he's like, and I think I uh, made the banana daiquiri a thing a century too early. Oh, and then Twelve talked about introducing Dude. Oh, right. Yes. Yes. Dude. Oh, God. Um, so Electric guitars on tanks in a coliseum. That will You'll never be that cool. No uh, one will ever be that cool. Yes. Now, so that's... <laughs> so, my, so my thing is, while the ending was weak... I think because of how they... That's why uh, you were unfortunately a unable the first time you watched this episode to catch the first 10 minutes. And you were like, I don't think I'm missing much. And I'm like, I think you're missing a lot. Because the way they build everything up, despite the ending being, again, just I'll keep on saying it, weak, I feel like they built everything up with the companions and with these, these gods in a way that really made you believe that they weren't even going to address potentially the issue with her being trapped. They were going to go in a different direction entirely. So then at least that was my take initially, because imagine watching it just cold Yeah. and you see her and you're like, well, they're not mentioning Ruth. So maybe they're going to have another plot of either her because you see this guy being very antagonistic. 
So it's not like they're going to be like, we'll see him another time. Like, no, clearly he is the threat. But then what does this woman have to do with it? I thought they were doing another plot thread for the end of the season or for another episode. Then I think, and it's funny, this is where I think the episode, I don't say it's my least favorite, but it definitely is my second to least. Um, Even though I, I hype up the building towards it, once we get to that second half, then it feels like there's a lot going on. That's trying to be done because we're focusing on these two gods. And by the way, uh, this is not the first time gods have existed within the Doctor Who canon. Yeah. So that's also something to mention as well. Yeah. So only because I thought it was new and people were like, no, 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 it's a nice callback. And I was like, oh, damn. All right. We've literally dealt with Satan before. Well, no, not just with Satan, <laughs> but um, not just Satan, <laughs> though. Not, but, or... Well, no, it was basically yeah. Satan. It was Satan. It that... was basically. <laughs> well, no, it was Satan that basically put the curse of uh, the Orochimaru curse. Oh my god! Onto, that was no, dude. That's those. That I saw the markings, and I was like, yeah. As when I was younger, and I was like, it looks like they are trying to uh, make them a vessel for Orochimaru. Anyway, so uh, and then Rose had that huge fight with Orochimaru, and it was like all the effects, and it was it was the budget was fucking amazing. Yes. I do enjoy the effects throughout these past few episodes. They've actually done a really good job. And and also talking about some of the monsters as well. Other than the ones, of course, that just, you know, kind of came back. Uh, it was like that kind of evil creature, the dream creature, uh, that uh, I want to make sure I get her name right. Um, uh, who the doctor met in Aleppo. Uh, Tahira. Yes. Yeah. Go. I, I do really enjoyed how that looked as well. Um, and of course, the before we knew that it was a Cyberman, before we knew what was going on in the haunting of Villa Diodate, uh, Diodati, um, I really enjoyed the, the spooks a yeah. lot. And that but, one I definitely felt like was well paced in what it was doing like at first yes. felt a little weird when like the hand popped out of the painting and i'm like what in the fuck is that gonna <laughs> yeah up being yeah and then it's like no it's literally reality is being altered around us and i was like oh i like it uh yeah. but i wanted to mention the millennials because uh the millennials that's funny <laughs> uh Those well, dead millennials. no 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 that's that's another good place thing it just hit me i meant the uh the the immortals yeah. Uh, apparently, in that episode, in Can You Hear Me? So, uh, when Zelen was talking to the Doctor, he mentions other immortal beings like the Celestial Toymaker, which was actually from the first Doctor serial of the same name. Unsure if I saw that because I'm wondering, was it complete or not? If it was yeah. complete, I saw it, but I also probably saw it like 10 years ago. Uh, I probably saw it a little more recently than that. but Yes. So he is another immortal. Yeah. Um, also, he mentioned uh, the Guardians, which are for multiple serials in the fourth and fifth Doctor series. I probably have not seen that. Didn't get too far in the fourth before I stopped watching. And mm -hmm. then the Eternals, which are from a fifth Doctor serial called Enlightenment. So this is very important yeah. because it's not introducing a new plot point. It's actually reintroducing. So it's actually a callback, which is nice. Yeah. It's just that, again, it felt like they were dealt with rather quickly. Yeah. But, um, but no, you mentioned the pacing in, um, in, uh, the villa. I'm just going to call it the villa from now on. Yeah. Because I'll, I'll, I'll keep going sexily, like, um, or the haunting. I, and I'll, yeah, and I'll confuse everybody and call it the haunting. Yeah, no, I'll just we'll call it the haunting. No, we're talking about the same episode, but no one else will. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll just, I'll just not do any of that. Okay, so the haunting. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I think it's definitely one of my favorites. I want to say Fugitive of the Jejun is my favorite just because of that twist and bringing back Jack and everything. But yeah. I, I, I do really enjoy that one a lot. But yeah. I think The Haunting, and it's not just because it's more fresh in my mind. I think that it's just the story that they were telling, tying it back to Jack right before they go into a two-parter, essentially in a sense turning this into a three-parter, but not really. Yeah, I I really do enjoy that, and especially trying to tie it into um, to Frankenstein and to Mary yeah. Shelley. I am a little confused though because I was under the impression, and maybe I'm wrong here. Uh, that can happen from time to time. Oh uh, really? It's true. I, it no, shocks no, even no. me. 
yeah, don't, you know, don't sell yourself short. Like, you're damn near omnipotent at this point. Like, come on. Look, I I agree, but... Uh, How dare you. There... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but in all seriousness, I was under the impression that people were antagonistic towards Mary Shelley or the idea of a woman writing a novel. And I thought that she actually wrote it under a pseudonym. Hmm. I was under the impression that she did not... Uh, do, 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 do. Like, I thought it was a very Mulan-type situation. Yeah. I could swear I remember hearing that either in school or through the, the Ethernet. Well... I guess it's time to look up people from history again and Doctor Who talks. I know, and don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that, like, I, look, I'm not saying no, that they I mean, should go I, into I the horrors, you, you know, but it's one of those things where if it was supposed to be a secret, it is kind of funny that they are going exactly against history by having everyone go, I'm so happy that you're writing. And she's like, it's nay on the fucking Frankenstein, nay. <laughs> and yet she's the like the doctor's the first one to be like hey shouldn't we write about a corpse animating and well that's because they were en route to do that right and then they got interrupted by the doctor and them yeah like they were literally about to be like oh my god shouldn't we like write something fun also by the way that event though to be fair that specific event before the doctor obviously came in uh did happen so what I mean by that is, uh, I don't mean all the hauntings and the Cybermen. Uh, apparently, the the area that they were, right, did exist. They did go there that summer. Yeah. I want to make sure I get the, um, where was it? Um, I had it in front of me. Oh, there we go. Okay. So, yeah, a, a certain amount of the setup for the episode is true. So yeah. Lord Byron, Mary, and the others, including uh, that, like the the villa that they stay in during the summer, yeah, it was unusually stormy, specifically due to the eighteen fifteen eruption of Mount Tambora, which is yeah. why they called it the year without a summer, right? Because it had, yeah, yeah. And an event like that on the Earth can shift climate patterns. Yes. So all of that did happen. Of yeah. course, it's, you know, the Doctor and the Cybermen that are quote unquote up for dispute. Um, but uh, but that did happen. I again, though, I could swear that Mary Shelley was not appreciated either in her time or in the moment. Right. And if I'm wrong, my bad. But I could swear it was. It was a, a hint of that, at least with the general public. You could argue that, you know. Ah, uh, no, you're you're right. Yeah, it was issued a nom. Like, okay, I'm just. It's a Wikipedia article, but. But you can you can see where it it, it derives from. It's not just yeah, unless there's no source. It, um. She finished it and published it, but it was issued anonymously. Right now, it's written for Mary by Percy by her husband. Right. So, yeah, so it was issued anonymously. You could argue that they all were friends, so they're all fine with it, but the general public isn't. Right, yeah. You know? Um, and I know that arguably that fact doesn't necessarily... Uh, okay, yeah, there's a second edition of Frankenstein that was published later. Okay, that, that, was, that had her... That edition credits... Her, her lady name on it. Book's author, yeah. Oh, no, a lady name. Um, <clears throat> but uh, Scandalous... I, I wonder what people were more scared about, like, the ghastly phantoms or that a woman wrote it? Oh, no. Yeah, I mean, it was the 1800s, so... Oh, no. <laughs> oh, fun fact. Lord Byron... Yeah. ...actually slept with uh, Ada Lovelace's mom. Well, then. Yeah. Be that means that, like, he made Ada Lovelace. He's, he's her dad legit well. <laughs> so that's why the doctor mentioned ada oh shit the doctor said something like oh i really like ada oh right you know my <laughs> dog oh god <laughs> oh god yes 
Uh, <laughs> but that also brings me to one of my favorite lines in that when he's like really, he just starts getting interested in the doctor. And oh, he says, he says some, I forget exactly how he worded it. And she's like, you may not. Like, no. <laughs> and then turns back to what she's doing immediately. I know, and he was like, "What?" Because <laughs> so no, because Lord Byron, known notoriously for his promiscuity, and had mm-hmm. to flee from London to Lake Geneva prior to 1816. I don't know why, but I have a strange feeling it was sex related. Yeah, was the legitimate father to Ada Lovelace, whom the Doctor and her companions had met in 1834 in the season's two-part premiere, Spyfall. So yeah, that's hilarious. Um, also, it hit me, and by it hit me, I mean I saw it on Wikipedia. Uh, apparently, the Cybermen have not been around since the Doctor Falls, which was legit three years ago. They'll say ten series finale, but I forget uh, with all the gaps. That was in 2017, Tristan. Shit! Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and you know, I'm fine with them taking this type of gap seriously just like give us it's weird i'm i like that they gave us new ideas last series i think we've said this before uh throughout uh discussing this specific series i love the new ideas but i hate that it felt like nothing could go anywhere not so much with the villains and any kind of overarching plots related to them but it felt like the doctor and her companions were just in a in cryostasis like, they might as well have been asleep until this series, where things are actually hitting the fan and they're all learning things about each other that, for a whole series, nobody dared to question. Do you know what I mean? I, I guess, yeah. Like, I like this series more because they're starting to ask questions about the Doctor and the Doctor doesn't have answers. <clears throat> yeah like none of that happened last series i'm not saying we had to have anything deep and dark happen like anything with the time lords or with the master again i'm not even getting into the characters uh the external the villains i'm talking about within their own little crew their their fam yeah right having that human element of wow we actually don't know each other as well as yeah we think we do that went for a full 12 episodes and a new year's special and now they're like hey doc um People have homes. Do you? Cool. What, uh, hey, Doc. Um, people age. Do you? <clears throat> I just... It's just like... Uh, 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 it took you that long? Jesus, guys. Like, I'm not saying I would immediately question everything she's about, but, like, I feel like it's very human to be like, Hey, Doc. Um, thank you for saving me. Yeah. Several times over. And also today several times over (laughs) but um do you like eat anything ever like do you want to go out have a drink do you do that like do we do we talk about our lives do we do that we don't talk about the pain (laughs) huh no uh because all of them have experienced some shit before getting on that tardis but like do we do we not just talk about like oh are we the first that have been on this tardis Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like if she's been dodging questions, she's been doing it long enough that they've all been fine until, like, you know what? This season, we're going to care. <laughs> um, but uh, I don't get me wrong. I'm liking it. It's just such an interesting juxtaposition from last season. Right. Where it really does feel like, like, I I don't hate I last season. It. Like, 13 walks out. It's the curse of the Time Lord. You hear Matt sigh audibly. <laughs> <laughs> see at least i'd prefer some bullshit like that um although i will say though i did enjoy the doctor being socially awkward and th- that being something that's a specific trait to her yeah well because some people online thought that she it, this was in uh specifically in can you hear me uh at the end with graham where he was like yeah. am i gonna be okay and she's like i'm a bit socially awkward um I'm going to go over here and uh, mess with some buttons, and then I'll think about what I should have said right now. Right. Some people thought that she was actually being dismissive, and I was like, what? Like, it did not come off as dismissive. It legitimately came off as, I legitimately don't know what to say. Right. Uh, If it were 12, it would have come off dismissive. (laughs) Well, that's because because he has attack eyebrows. Okay? (laughs) Do not underestimate the arsenal that is those eyebrows. Okay. Well, imagine if thirteen just pulled out some index cards and she's like, "Huh, forgot I still had these. Maybe there's something in here I can use." 
Oh my god. I would She's like, no, I would. <laughs> she I was just like, uh, I am sorry for your loss. I'm not gone yet. Uh, hold on. Right's future. Yeah. <laughs> That's not the right one either. Is it? Uh, I know it's gonna be in here somewhere, but. Mm. So yeah, I I don't know. So uh, people online were like, "She's being dismissive, and that's awful. Why would the doctor be dismissive and mean?" And I'm like, "No, I genuinely think she's like, I legit don't know what to say." It's odd because it seemed like, though, to be very frank with you, this doctor does seem like the one who usually knows what to say. Yeah, no. So I, it fell I, out I, of. But I'm. But don't get me wrong. I if that is something that's canon to her now, I accept that. But I don't feel yeah. like this doctor was ever bad in those situations although maybe i haven't been picking up the small social cues that have been left i and thought I, she yeah but tell me what you think sorry yeah no i i agree with that i felt like out of most well i mean out of most of the doctors in new who i feel like like her or all of them no, like all of them would be on par and at least have something to say in that in that situation. Other than Capaldi, I guess. So maybe it's just yeah, the new yeah, thing they're trying to keep. He would still have something to say. It might not be as like, he might be a bit blunt about it, but mm -hmm. it would be like, oh, if you think about it, that's actually a kind of nice way to look at it. And he's like, there you go. He's like, you could have delivered it a little better. He's like, shrugs. <laughs> oh, come on, Graham. We're all going to die, Doctor. Yeah, right? <laughs> oh, um, but not you, ever, Doctor. At least not now. Yeah. You're fine now. Don't worry about it now. That's not, that's the whole point. I am worried about it now. Well, then you're wasting both of our times. Oh, Doctor. Doctor. <laughs> just, I just imagine just every time Clara just under her breath, Doctor, through her doctor. teeth, Doctor. Oh, God. Um, yeah. yeah I have no, to say, I though. Same way. I feel like. I mean, I guess maybe it's just her bubbliness that kind of hides it a bit. Probably. I have to say, though, I do enjoy the fact that none of the companions at this point are her. Like, she calls them fam, but, like, nothing about them right now is making her go, I will slaughter a small child if any, one, if any hair on their heads. If anything were to happen to Graham... Uh, no, because it got to the point with the doctor where, with some of these companions, where I was like, all right, doctor, like, you're not, you know, Anakin, relax. Anakin has made some questionable choices in his youth. How dare you? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Anakin hasn't made questionable wrong. choices in his youth. He literally killed a bunch of children. I never said you were wrong in what oh. you said. I just said, how dare you? <laughs> oh, okay. Look, I'm just saying that, um, what was it? That, uh, that, <laughs> yeah. You did nothing wrong. That is a bolt. That is just <laughs> empirically untrue. You're right. No. Okay. Excellent. Um, no, I would never back that statement. <laughs> good. Good. Oh, but anywho, but like in all seriousness though, uh, yeah, I, I'm happy that it seems like the Doctor has a bit more of a casual... Now, it's weird, though, because maybe then that, that casualness is why she hasn't opened up to them about certain things, perhaps. You could argue that as well. Um, but I feel like you... Like, I'd rather... If there is a choice, I'd rather that casualness without her opening up versus her opening up and feeling like, because I've opened up to you, I will destroy the Earth to save you. What? Right. Mm, that doesn't sound right, but I feel like I've done it. Like, the Doctor has, like, done things... I mean, wasn't it... Yeah, Capaldi used a gun. Yeah. And I was like, bruh, you... What? Well, it's to save Clara, but I... She's died, like, eight other times, too. Do You don't remember that? How many regenerations do you have left? A few. Good. Holy shit! Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I still love that scene, but yeah, it is it's a bit extreme. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, look, don't get me wrong, it's a powerful scene, but th then again, Capaldi can make reading the, po the phone book powerful and cause me to weep uncontrollably. Uh, but he could, he could do it. Give him a phone book, you'll be crying for days. <clears throat> and uh, so yeah, I just, um, 
I, I'm just happy with where the Doctor is right now. Uh, my my least favorite, as I mentioned before, Praxius. You said your least favorite was Can You Hear Me? Yeah. And that's just due to its ending. I mean, I just... I feel like out of this group, I, I did enjoy the other episodes more than that one. All right. And can you pick a favorite? Because, again, difficult for me. If it's not Fugitive, it's The Haunting. Um... Yeah, I I guess I'd have to say the same. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so my question to you is, where were you when you found out who Dr. Ruth was? Um, it was 4 a.m. I was in my living room catching the rerun of that night's episode. Right. Um, and I was just looking at the TV screen going, what the fuck? what the fuck what the fuck <laughs> i'll tell but you it, but in the best way possible yes i'll tell you where i was i was uh in my home in my apartment uh probably in the uh on the couch laying it was uh oh, i'm going to say it was smack in the middle of the day the day after the episode had aired it's on my dvr and I'm scrolling through my subscriber feed, and I see the official Doctor Who YouTube channel. And they spoil the ever-fucking-love out of me. (laughs) I'll tell you the day that I unsubscribed from the official Doctor Who YouTube channel. See, well, it's frustrating because, look... I get you. Right? <laughs> Look. That's unfortunate. It is extremely unfortunate because, like, I forgot what they titled it. But you know what? Because I'm this mad, I'm going to check right now. Maybe they've renamed it because they're smart. But I highly doubt it because they're dumb. <laughs> no, like, if I if we did not have a podcast, that would have made me want to step away from the show. Not watch. Because... How fucking dare you? Like, if... Because let me just be honest with you, dude. Like, why would I want to watch when you are spoiling your own product the day after? It's very much like WWE. Why do I want to watch this show if... WWE actually sends me updates sometimes. They've stopped doing it because they were they, they somehow wisened up. But uh, Satish and I would be watching a pay-per-view. And we'd be a little bit behind... And then they would buzz with notifications and say who won and lost. Oh, oh. And I'm like, you are are you fucking stupid? Turns I, out they did it for a month, so they are. Um, well then, uh, they did it for more than a month, but like it happened to us, and we were like, oh my god, this is so dumb. Because and thank God they you know took it the fuck off. Um, like stop doing that. Now they just give updates, like general updates, like watch it. Why don't you? And I'm like, all right, that's fair. Yeah. Um, now let's see i want to see the name of this shitty ass motherfucking video i'm over it though oh there we go it's still up it's still fucking up uh so they this is the episode right well actually i'm sorry they huh huh, i may not have seen this uh part of it although i may have so there's several spoilers there is hello i'm the doctor Fugitive of the Jazoon, Doctor Who, and it's Ruth's face from the episode when she said it. Right. Then there's Captain Jack is back, Fugitive of the Jazoon, Doctor Who series 12. Then there's, so this is two videos in the same day. Then there's, you missed me, right? Hashtag Jack is back. Then there's Captain Jack Harkness, Doctor Who, which is a general overview of his time on the TARDIS, to be fair. Yeah. But yeah, when I saw that and I saw Hello, I'm the Doctor, I was like, these mother of all fuckers so yeah i legit unsubscribed i'm happy to be gone i'll look up episode trailers when i need to but i'm i'm never if i could block people on youtube i would have blocked them in that moment okay i mean this was technically the day after yes not a full 24 hours after okay so if you had work and you woke up in the morning You were like, oh, I'm going to watch Doctor Who today. And you're on your normal subscriber feed. Yeah. You would see four videos. 
I, I get I get you and why this has made you upset. Um, this isn't Twitter. This is an yeah. official channel right. within 24 hours. Right. I mean, to be fair, a Doctor Who airs at like 3 in the UK, I believe. But here it airs at like 9. Yeah. 8. 8. 8? Eight. Yeah. What? 8. No, that's a lie. Yeah, 8 p.m. Sunday night. It, it, I don't believe you. You don't have to believe me for me to be right. Mm, I doubt it. Then why do I watch it at 9 every night and, and I'm on time? That's odd. Then why do I watch it at 8 every night and I'm on time? Mm, one of us is wrong. Odds are it's me. <laughs> I mean, it also might be because we have different providers? Question mark? No, no. That would never be the case. We're in the same time zone for fuck's fuck. Fair. Um, I mean, BBC America, right? Yes. Okay. Uh. Huh. <laughs> oh no! I oh no! I'm I'm looking this up. I'm extremely confused. I am too. They do not. None of them are telling the exact time. Why? <laughs> Why are you doing this to me right now? <laughs> We're different versions of the same podcast. <laughs> oh, that would be that would definitely be fun. But no, it's something much stupider than that. Oh, but I'm the those guys. No, I'm the those guys. <laughs> do you have uh, speaking of do you have any um uh do you have any theories on Ruth? I do actually. Please um, go on. So, it's kind of it kind of falls in line with um remember back when I thought the uh the beings of light that the master was working with were Cybermen, but from a different, like a parallel universe kind of deal. Yes. I, I feel like that's, that's kind of Ruth's. I know I've been going on about parallel universes this season, but here it's not just like, it's the first time I was just wrong, but here it seems like no we have two versions of the same person who are not the same but similar enough that like they've gone through like you said similar events or even possibly the same events but they are obviously two different people so i'm like ah although i feel like their tardises would be like what the fuck is going on right now yeah well i mean doctor the tardises have they even acknowledge that TARDISes have done that yeah. before, like, you know, without exploding. Being um, in a different universe and being like, mm, I don't like this. Yeah. But, yeah, just with her character, like, although it does feel like they've lived different lives to me, because... They're... Well, no, because the Time Lords are around, so I'm assuming they have to have lived different lives. Hmm. Um, but we don't know if like a fracture yeah, in the timeline split. split them up right, and she's for... just feuding with the time Lords again. Maybe like we could take a moment. It could be from 10. It could definitely be member 11's shenanigans. Oh, oh. or oh. Oh. yeah, <laughs> e exactly. Or it could be from some of the shit that happened with 12 meeting himself the first yeah. version of himself and then them both regenerating at the same time that right. could have caused some type of fracture that's true i i don't know if they would go that deep with it i kind of would appreciate if they did but i mean well if unless they i mean if they're gonna go with uh, the thing is well they've been bringing back a lot of villains from this past year and they went yeah. as far back as to go back to old classic who yeah for the you know for um for immortals so I think they could go only a few years back for Capaldi and um, yeah. I forgot who played uh, uh, the first Doctor. It wasn't Hartnell because it was a newer actor. He played Finch on. Um, yes, yes. Yeah, uh, uh, by the uh, way, we're both right. Oh, it airs what? at eight o'clock now, but for years it aired at nine o'clock. So my what? brain is stuck on 9, but it airs at 8 p.m. Like, I don't know if it's just this season or if it was last season as well. Right. But it has been airing at 8. 
but okay. it aired at nine like for a while and the reason why i know this is because i actually i saw doctor who premieres on bbc america jan first and i was like what and then i saw it oh no it wasn't this article it was a different article and it had rory amy oh there we go yes bbc america's doctor who returns saturday september 1st and i was like well happy birthday yeah. 9 p.m and i was like oh ho, ho and then i click on it and then the article was from uh let's see it was <laughs> asylum of the daleks was the first episode ha huh. that's you how long the ago date right but the year wrong yeah you pilot your tardis so that's the issue is that it's like uh you know Doctor Who premieres Saturday, September 1st, 9 p.m. ET, as part of Supernatural Saturday. Um, you remember that? Yes, I yeah. do. That's the issue. I think it was at 9 for so long, my brain's like, it must be at 9! Explain! Explain! And, and yeah, exactly. And you're just like, it's at 8. And I'm like, bullshit! Like, you're a Cyberman? I'm like, bullshit! I'm a Cyberman and you're a <laughs> Yeah, basically... <laughs> Um. Oh. But yeah, no. I, but dude, I don't give a fuck if. What was that? The schedule has been upgraded. Yes, it has. But I don't. I mean, being earlier is nice, especially for any of the, the you know the youths that want to watch, or people like myself who, depending on my sleep schedule, I'm either an older, I'm, I'm either a grandma or I'm like. It's hilarious for me because I during the week I'm like, oh yeah, Doctor Who's on Sunday night at eight. Sunday rolls around. What day is it? What time is it? Fuck! And like, it's like 11 o'clock. I'm like, oh, god damn it. Now right. I gotta wait for four. <laughs> it's just so weird, though, because I could swear to God, man, memories are, memories are bad. I could swear to God I have it on at nine, and it still says that it's recording, and then yeah. I'm watching it. I mean, Maybe... the past one went past nine o'clock, so maybe that's what it was also yeah. it might also be the fact that i'm recording other things so if the red light is on yes my brain is like doctor who is still going and it's like oh no it's not no honey no <laughs> now let me tell you why again back to me being upset about things um look man if it's if it's a hey dude you know game of thrones is a cultural phenomenon stay off twitter yeah right i get that but could you imagine episode seven spoiling a famous death on their YouTube channel, Star Wars on their YouTube channel, the day after the movie comes out? Yeah. It's like, give me it, some time to watch this. Yeah, the official channel. Yeah, I, the, I get that. Yeah. And remember, they want you to subscribe to their official channel. This brings me back to the Dragon Ball Super stuff with Toei and their marketing department with Bandai Namco for the Dragon Ball Super movie, where they spoiled certain plot points. And if I didn't have to go see it, not have to, but if I didn't go see it with you, because we planned it, to be fair, it was a have to, because we were like, we're doing this. But we planned on going to see it, and then we reviewed it on the podcast for Anna Saturday. If Anna Saturday was not present, I would have been so – I would have been like, nah, dude, sorry. I'll see it on DVD or something because you spoiled huge plot points for me. Right. And in this case, when you spoil both, they didn't just get Ruth. They got Captain Jack too. Yeah, I knew both were coming from the get-go. So the entire episode, the crux of the entire episode is, oh, is she the doctor or is her companion the doctor? And I'm like, I, I know. It's her oh my god ruth who are you you're the doctor like right. the entire episode hinged on that yeah who are you i'm like she's the doctor she she said it i didn't <laughs> see the video of course but the thumbnail is her standing looking very right. much like huh she's she has the i'm the doctor face yeah the doctor usually has that face right no matter which iteration it's the yeah i'm the doctor and so she has that face standing behind her TARDIS-y uh, lighthouse, which I didn't expect, to be fair, so that was nice. I mean, yeah. I kind of saw it coming, but, like, oh. they didn't spoil it in a fucking thumbnail. Right. And uh, that, that was the funny bit. Um, I was talking about it with uh, Anthony. And uh, he's like, so it's kind of, it, it's now, uh, it's canon now that the Doctor's been on Long Island. <laughs> Although, yes. no, wait, that's back in, um, that's Tesla's, sorry. I keep getting that confused because they're at a lighthouse and I keep thinking it's the island. It's not. Um, I mean, 
I mean, just I mean, are you just trying to say that like Long Island has a lot of lighthouses? Because if so, then perhaps I they... mean that's also true. But <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I don't look. I don't hate her inclusion. I don't hate uh this t- this story. I love it. I love the fact that they brought back Captain Jack again. It just for me personally, it was tainted when the official channel in the smack middle of the day because i'm trying to like see stuff that i could either watch or put in my watch later list so that you know when i'm doing shit i just have stuff to like walk around like podcasts or whatever and then i just see hello i'm the doctor and i'm like yeah all right fuck i'm gonna move on from this eventually but not this series i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna take the pain and you hold it close oh my god you're gonna need a regeneration to get over this one basically um (laughs) no because like i make jokes about them spoiling the next doctor because i get it they're going to be filming on location i don't like it but i get it they're gonna be filming on location and someone's gonna see someone in a suit and now be like that's the doctor i mean think about it if they didn't spoil whitaker people would have been like why are there two women one of them is in a suit oh my god (laughs) and then people would have just flooded the internet with that so i understand they want to get in on that. I get it. But like fucking the day after on a channel that they want me to subscribe to, too. That's the thing. Like this isn't like, you know, the news picking it up. I don't believe I saw anyone else spoil it. I mean, I think after I watched the episode, a friend of mine spoiled it. And it was kind of funny because he also did it the next day because it was, to be fair, there was a piece written on it. And someone was like, dude, spoilers. And he was like, crap, I didn't know. Yeah. Because he doesn't know Doctor Who. So that was fine. I was like, okay, cool. Um, but I already had seen it too. So I was like, all right. But like the official channel. Yeah. Within a 24 hour span. You know, yeah, people I, have lives. Um, I guess it's for me like spoil, like even big spoilers for me don't usually ruin something for me because I still want to see like how we get to that point. But that's only if the spoiler isn't like. The specific spoiler I'm talking about from Star Wars Episode Seven, it came out of nowhere, so they weren't building up. In my opinion, if I remember correctly, they weren't building up to that moment, and then the character died. Yeah, like it, like you know, it was a co- confrontation. It was sad, and then they died, and that's something that we didn't see coming unless we heard every interview the actor ever gave. <laughs> uh, but other than that, we did not see it coming. Uh, but in this case, in this case, it's like the entire episode was built on like, yeah, I, you, I, I understand in the when, sense that here, the entire, the tension of the whole episode is gone for you. Yeah. So that means that when, in my opinion, and it's not actually true, it's just, it's just kind of funny to think about when they've spoiled it for you, the episode turns into, uh, it, it goes from, oh my god, audience, who is she? To, do you fucking know, you fucking stupid fucking fucks, huh? <laughs> How you fucking, do you fucking know, you idiots, you fucks? Did you go on YouTube, you schmucks? And I'm like, I did. I Don't did. Or walks out on screen, do you know who Ruth is? Tell me. <laughs> Dora is definitely, uh, her, the backpack is her TARDIS. Um, oh god. And but, Ruth the companion jesus christ i mean it all and guess who's the master swiper no swiping thank you thank you jesus christ yep and the map is a version of the sonic although it talks that's weird this this hurts (laughs) oh my It shouldn't hurt as much as it does, but it does. You take that pain and you hold it close. Oh my fucking god. (laughs) This is the curse of the podcast, Lord. Um... So yeah, I have to say, though, the way they set the episode up, I mean, bringing the the, uh, Jadoon back, including, uh the uh the uh, a version of the time lords that i did not see coming i was like who is trying to come after this version of the doe fuck that yeah. was at least a shock you know i'm surprised they didn't put that in a fucking thumbnail <laughs> and um <laughs> hey look top five versions of the time lords and then this is fucking one of them and it's just a fucking arrow pointing to her from the episode um 
But it's interesting, too, because she did not know that version of the Doctor. So I think it does lead to, like, another potential timeline universe theory. Yeah. Like, that Time Lord did not go... Well, she didn't know which version of the Doctor was which, to be fair. But, like, any either one of them could have said they were the Doctor and she would have believed them. So, to be fair, she didn't know either one of them uh, was the Doctor. But I do wonder, like, what's going on there? Like, if there's just a whole other timeline universe where the Time Lords are A-OK and the Master's mega dead. <laughs> Could you imagine? Ruth, what did you do to the Master? I snapped his neck. Oh. <laughs> From behind. Didn't see it coming. Oh. <laughs> and then I laser rifled his course to make sure. Oh. <laughs> uh, I can I only imagine. Oh, my God. I can just imagine the Master. This version. Please, I can only get so erect. Yeah, right. Um, Master, just can I can I have that version of the Doctor stay and you leave? No, maybe. No, damn it. <laughs> um, to be fair though, she actually does not use guns either. She was because I thought I was like, oh, so this is a version that uses. And she was like, no, I was just lying. Although she did use the whole, um, the the whole if you try to shoot me with this gun, I will. Like, right. I will fire back at you. It's funny. Like, she used the gun against her adversary, but without having to pull the trigger. But in a way that was very much like... Some people are assuming that she's a companion before... Uh, companion. She's a doctor before Hartnell or any of his companions. And I'm wondering if that's true. I don't feel like it is because it seems like they firmly set aside, no, the first doctor is Hartnell. Yeah. But... The way she did that, that is a very old... That's a classic Who way of murder. Yeah. Like, oh, (laughs) it's clean. My hands are clean. They shot themselves. You gave them the gun. Yeah, I didn't pull the trigger, though. Don't get me wrong. Tenet did have that whole, let's put them in alternate dimensions to torture them thing that I was like, whoa there, buddy. (laughs) Um, Whoa, Nelly. But... It is interesting that again the way she went about it it was it was yeah. definitely something that was um something that I I would see a classic doctor doing. You know what I'm saying, right? I yeah. know you've seen some I, of Classic Who. Yeah, I, I I could see other doctors doing it. But who usually are not new who doctors, usually. Yeah. Usually. Like I don't know, I feel like 12 would even until he had his, you know, apparent seemingly mental breakdown about clara he would be like a gun no yeah um so yeah so i'm interested so your theory is i i forgot what you said your specific theory was because mine is alternate dimension breaking off yeah well i said alternate universe but i think we're both of the same oh but not breaking off like it's always been like, like there was no breaking point. It's just this is our universe, and this is her universe. The same way that until they merged with, um, with Rose, you know, and us with Bad Wolf, it was just two separate universes. I guess so. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know about them merging because well, I don't like mean they... merging. I'm just saying like not when when, no, when they no, met no. is In what the... I meant her having the same events i i don't know about that okay so then it's not the same universe with a spin you think it's like a completely different universe with its own shit going on yeah maybe with some similarities but enough to be like "Mm, this is very this is still very different from what we've experienced right that would be interesting. And, I mean, th- another reason why I think people are thinking that she's an older regeneration is because she's still in feud with the Time Lords, where I feel like this Doctor at this age is like, even though she's upset that they've died, even if they were antagonistic, I don't know if she would be like, I'm running into fight. Yeah. You know, like, she yeah, seems very... Yeah. Like, 13 would be like, we don't have to... She would go out of her way to be like, stop this we don't have to do this anymore like please for the love of everything holy let me just help you for once in your fucking lives basically um so yeah so i even with all the issues i enjoy her being brought into the fray um 
I enjoy not only Jack being brought back, but also having it tie into something and mean something. It's sad that he hasn't met the Doctor yet, but I'm assuming that because he hasn't, he's either going to meet her in these next two episodes, or they're going to keep, uh, like, uh, hopefully Jodie Baker's going to stay around. They're going to keep her contract going until the next series of Doctor Who. Yeah. Because it would be awful if he just never gets to meet her. I'd be like, what the fuck? Yeah. Oh, and his his introduction was beautiful. Yes. Like him literally when he first fishes up Graham. And the fact that he's stolen yet another ship that is not his own. I know. <laughs> and the fucking thing that's like when he looks down, he's like, ah, I can't stay here much longer. Don't worry. I'll program it to put you guys back. It's always the nano genes. I'm like, you even stole the same type of ship. What? I mean, he knows what he what he ah. can and can't pilot, sort of. No, I know. That's true. But, like, you think after the events of Nine, he'd be like, yeah, no more uh, truly warships, like, nano genes. Mm-mm. Me and nano genes don't mix. <laughs> I, um... Oh, God. But, yeah, yeah I... he just, like, goes over to Graham and is like, uh, love, love the... The gray fox look, very. Oh my god! Very the silver deep. fox look. Yeah. It's a it's a term amongst those within the LGBTQ plus community. If you did not know, Tristan. No, I did. Oh, okay. <laughs> very. You got it. But still, very sexy. <laughs> and he was like, "Um, do I know you?" <laughs> Graham's just like, "Do I fucking know you?" <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> But uh, no, um, and yeah, the there was a lot. He's like, uh, the doc, you know, the doctor. Yeah, she's back on Earth. Oh, I've got to see this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, but I, I think I really enjoyed it because it all made sense and tied in together very well. It's like, oh, yes, there's a force field. So that's fucking up my ability to target directly the doctor as well as I mean, that was their theory. But also now we also know that there are two doctors. So that's clearly fucking everything up that too yeah i'm assuming that was the that was the actual you know thing going on um oh that was the other thing that was really interesting or funny about that episode when i was watching it when um uh uh, ruth was definitely giving me like fob watch vibes oh no yeah but i'm like we already saw one master well yeah and it wasn't the master but just her I forget what she was looking at on the wall, but when she started looking at it, I'm like, oh, we've seen that look before. And there was something else, even even the fact that, like, her memories were slowly coming back to her, I'm like, you got another personality locked in there. Like, we, I'm, like, putting it together as I'm watching the episode, I'm like, we've seen this shit before, where is that? Oh. But as soon as I thought I had it, like, kind of figured out, I did not like. I didn't expect the the doctor to come into play. As soon as like, Jody digs up the TARDIS, I completely lost my shit. I was like, "What? What? Huh?" Yeah, no, I um, big. <laughs> that was, that was nuts. Like that's the one that fi- like threw me off of my horse, and I was like, I. I don't know what anything is anymore. <laughs> no, because I'll because I'll say like I said before, you know, that's the one thing that was not spoiled. So it's like, thank you, fucking thank you. I I didn't see it coming because I was like, oh, is she stranded on Earth? Oh, she is not. I yeah. was like, hot damn. She's hiding out on Earth. <laughs> yes, with her companion slash lover, uh, who died, which was sad. Yeah, I'll admit that got me. Um, I don't know if we can count it as another companion death because if he's not from our universe, that sort of doesn't count. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, right. Yes. So um, I enjoyed, you know, their dynamic. It's funny. I've actually had a similar thought um, about like how the doctor would like retire or hide out. So, you know, stole my idea. Copyrighted it. You, you, I'm gonna sue. I'm kidding. Oh my god. I'm not even kidding. No, because like I've, I, I did not in any way think about it in this respect. But I thought about it. Like, what would happen if you know, Doctor had to, um, fob watch themselves again, hide out, potentially you know find a human to love. However, in this case, it looks like they hid out together. 
Yeah. So they knew what it was going into it. My thought was, what if, you know, uh, at the time, Whitaker did not exist, so I was like, uh, if there was a doctor, I guess it would have to be he, the way the BBC casts. Um, but, you know, what if he fell to Earth, yada yada, had to fob watch himself for some reason or another, fell in love with a human, and then they kind of find out... Actually, it was different. It was, what if they both become companions? How funny would that be? <laughs> and he just didn't know. Right. <laughs> and the doctor didn't know because again fob watched so that fucks up everything um so yeah it was a different take but it was a similar idea of like oh doctor in love with companion st- quote unquote stuck on earth fob watched what would happen and it appears as if you know if we get another universe involved the time lords are still going to be looking for him yeah um but well, uh, I, I definitely feel like this like even though he died i somehow feel like he had a better time of it than Martha did <laughs> when she had to watch over Ted. Yeah. That's fair. Um, well, I mean, I think it's because, I don't know. I, well, I think it's because maybe she looked at it as like babysitting where he was maybe, I don't know. We don't know how long they were traveling together. Yeah. Um, it just felt like he could still live a life. Whereas Martha was stuck as a servant that whole time. And it's just like, wow, this yeah. is, yeah. I have a fucking doctorate. <laughs> no, yeah, that hurts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, w- one thing, so I wanted to say, um, talking about... Uh, Sorry. What? Cat. Oh, the cat attacked you? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Patchy, please do not attack Tristan, for he is podcasting on the internet. Um, Patchy, I know. Like, what well, are you... you know are you pawing at the fob watch? You should yeah. probably just describe, like, what the internet is to her first, probably. Um... Yeah, I think no. it'll all come into. Patchy is the doctor. She's yeah. pawing at me to open the watch. So you know what's something that I think nobody is asking. I'm sure someone on the internet's asking, but I have not heard anybody asking this. Uh, this will make you laugh. Everyone is sitting here like, so like, are the uh, is Ruth from another universe? Are the Time Lords from another universe? Nobody is asking. Not even one iota of a word of a phrase of a vowel of if that is our universe's jadoon oh, nobody's shit. even giving a fuck well oh it's fine i'm fine with this <laughs> we're okay we are not bested in combat or anything mm. Mm. you just you just insulted and also dishonored a Jadoon captain. Do you know what that means? I do. Now shut up and get in the TARDIS. <laughs> right, she ripped up the she ripped the horn. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, that hurt on multiple levels. Yeah. I don't again, wh- which horn did she rip? Was it our universe? Is it was it enough? The Jadoon looked very similar. I don't think the way she even described them and how they acted was very un Jadoon like. So I don't know. I don't know if that means that they're from the same timeline or whatnot. Yeah. Uh, or this universe, whatever you want to refer to it as. That's what was interesting too. It's not like they, as far as I remember, it didn't seem like they redesigned the Jadoon because that would have been interesting. Oh, they don't look similar to you know. They look a little bit different today. No, they were the same. Everything, if if I remember correctly. Yeah. Like their outfits, the way they acted, um, maybe a little bit forgiving. I mean, they gave them time. Granted, they said that they were actually... Give me nine. I will give you four minutes. Shit. All right, fine. That's more than I think a Jadoon would normally give. But, you know, maybe I'm nitpicking. Um, I feel like they would just shoot everyone and everything. (laughs) Um, But, no, I think what, what I liked about these episodes as well is, in my opinion, it feels like even with can you hear me with the way that ended it feels like the doctor is actually being put into situations where she has the opportunity to lose maybe it's just me but i feel like with the first series and it's not because they're villains that we know because it felt like the you know she was fucked with these um immortals um and i don't know anything about any immortals but it feels like with the first series like if i remember correctly her like it seemed like she and the companions were able to overcome stuff not easily but it didn't feel like they were always completely in danger 
in some cases they were, but I feel like this series they're really getting hit hard with um with these unwinnable situations. And in the case of um the haunting, I mean that butler died like yeah. And, you know, she's not always going to win. I mean, it literally looked like I mean, in a way she, that sets up the whole thing before this two-parter where Good she's man. like too. What was that? The nanny who was watching the baby, she got killed too. Right, I forgot about that. Yes. Like, oh god, like he just stuck his hand in there and just snap. I was mm. like, shit. Yeah. That's why I blocked it out. Neck. All right, so I blocked it out. That's what that was. Okay. Yeah, so. no. Like they didn't show her neck being twisted, but like you just see him stick his hand in and you hear the snap. And it was like, "Whoa." Like, at least the other guy, like, the other guy, he lifted up and choked him and, like, threw him on the ground. So, like, you could be, like, I mean, I looked at him, I'm like, oh, he did. But at the same time, you could be, like, maybe he's alive? But the other girl was like, oh, no. Oh, she dead. Like, 2,000% dead. Yeah. So, um... I have a meant too, uh, at, at the very end, when Shelly's, like, um, trying to reason with it. I love the fact that the doctor was like, please don't speak right now. And she's like, no, you're going to let me. Yet she was going on the whole tangent of like, words have power. Like, let, I need to save these people. It's important. It's like, granted, yeah, you don't want the human trying to go up against the Cybermen. But at the same time, let, let her talk. Let, let's see what happens. Yeah, exactly. What do yeah, you have to lose at I, this point? I had children too. And you loved them, didn't you? No, I hated them, and I slit their throats, and then he just starts going off, and I'm like, oh, no. Th- oh, God, this was a bad person made into a Cyberman. I love it, though. I think the doctor's like, Mary, it's not working. We have to change tactics. Mary's like, but the knife was dull, wasn't it? It was hard to do? Mary, no, shut up. <laughs> stop it, Mary, stop it, stop it. <laughs> Their bodies, it was hard to burn or bury. Mary, 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 we're done. We're done with this. Mary, Mary, stop. Oh, also, I got to ask you for the Cyberman himself. Like when she, when 13 was like, you're incomplete. I fucking loved it. Yeah. Like, what the hell are you talking about? And then I actually saw his face in the light and I'm like, oh, you're, you're still pretty much organic. What the fuck? Well, because they've. Even though, and this is something I actually do enjoy a lot, even though they've shown Cybermen in promotional materials, trailers, whatnot, they didn't spoil. They will tomorrow, by the way. I bet you tomorrow the Doctor Who YouTube channel will show the other side of his face. I'm not kidding. Uh, They're going to screen cap that and show it and say, what are you or something? Uh, whatever she quoted when she's or something like a quote that when she said, you're, you're still incomplete or you're not fully complete. Anyway, I'm not kidding. But what I do enjoy is through all the trailers, they've only shown the complete side of his face and he looked dusty. So it's like, all right, you've been through some shit. Yeah. But we didn't know when he would appear or the Cybermen themselves would appear. And that was quite interesting. And I enjoyed that. So I enjoyed being able to be like, yeah, we know when Cybermen are going to appear, but we didn't know how. I mean, we thought it was going to tie into the Masters subplot in his two-parter. Yeah. That the that, that they were really gonna be secret Cybermen. Secret Cybermen. Secret Cybermen. But no, it was not that at all. Thank you for being my echo in the haunted <laughs> house that is my apartment. <laughs> um also I love some of the special effects in this episode as well, walking through walls. Um also what they did with just the general design of the Cyberman, where you know, it, it's like you said, it's very organic because he hasn't been fully complete. But as you mentioned before, still an evil fucker. So it is actually somewhat irrelevant. Yeah, um, I love it. And so, yeah, it was it was a very interesting tale to tell. But I did see a, a teaser trailer and I'm not going to spoil what I saw, but. I'm I'm a little I'm a little PO'd not at the doctor for the next episode, but that they're doing another one of these plots. I'll, I'll talk about about it with you off podcast, Tristan. Did you see the trailer post episode? Um, for the next one. No, I well I saw the clip at the end of, like 
last night's uh last week's episode um but not this one well i mean i mean i meant i meant can you hear not can you hear me i meant um the haunting their next episode preview yeah i'm not gonna spoil what it was but did you see it yeah i did yeah i i'm I'm kind of sitting here and i'm like again we're going this route i don't want to say what it is specifically we'll talk about it uh in two weeks from now when we do the two-parter but right. um but yeah either way uh tristan did you so you said this one might be your favorite why is that i think it was just nice like going through like again i i like it when the doctor goes to historical figures because i don't know it's usually there's something like here there's something out of place that isn't supposed to be here historically Mm -hmm. and the doctor has to work to be like okay i need to get history back on track so that everything works the way it's supposed to but i also have to figure out what the fuck is causing this yeah i've i've been liking it but I do think it's starting to happen a bit too much. Maybe once per series starting the next one. Because this is already the second time it happened. And both time had, not inaccuracies at the very least, but omissions at the very least. Yeah. Well, because this one had Nikola Tesla and and uh, the haunting of Villa Diotati. And then, um, I sound like that MC from that show we went to. <laughs> Like, just the way I'm saying it, it just hit me. Ah. Oh. She was funny. Oh. Um. Oh. Why, why are you the count? Ah. Oh, no. Ah. Ah. Because I felt like putting the emphasis on it. That's fair. Uh, the emphasis. And, uh, last episode, uh, last series, it was Rosa, which I really enjoyed. The Demons of the Punjab, which I actually did enjoy as well, to be fair. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. That was a good one. Okay, then yeah, it was just those two actually. Okay, never mind. So it's been two per. I don't know for some reason. I think I, I think it's maybe because I didn't look up stuff with Rosa, and also it's a story we've been taught, so it felt very much like yeah, no, I I get where this is, I understand. But when it comes to um, although it's funny, I liked I liked the plot of Rosa. I felt odd about uh space biker dude, the space biker from Mars, who <laughs> we've never seen again. Yeah. In cool. retrospect, that's odd because he's just gone. Yeah. Anyway, um, but in this case, with Nikola Tesla's Night of Terror, I'm like, you know, I don't know much about the Tesla, and uh, he's he is from New York, so that already gives him a point in my book. Let me see how he is, and then he's like nothing like that. And I'm like, ah. Like, we talked about this last time, but like the fact that Tesla was actually sexist at that time, mm. it's like, I then why even do it on Tesla? You could do it on... There aren't a lack of historical figures. Granted, perhaps many of them are sexist. Uh, <laughs> Matt, could you also think about that one for a second? Um, right. But but in this case, also sexism comes up again, where it's just like, everyone's like, you go, girl, with Mary. And Mary's just like, ha, what do you mean? I don't write. You <laughs> fucking idiots. Uh, although again to be fair i said it before maybe because she's with her friends and lord byron um maybe (laughs) there's like a bit more of a relaxed vibe going on there yeah but uh but yeah so i don't think i hate the it's not like with the because the tesla one was so much like it was i really enjoyed it until i just learned oopsie daisies he hates women and i was like well okay that's a oversimplification but still it was done in a way where i'm like are you fucking serious yeah but in this case it's not gonna make me be like boo sorry what happened i sneezed okay i thought you saw a specter (laughs) <laughs> and you were wishing to warn me <laughs> on what is a very spooky night. Matt, the Cyberman is coming after me. Matt, I need you to help. Matt, why aren't you listening to me? You know, we had a great time here this week. Uh, I want to thank you all for tuning in. <laughs> great time here this week. <laughs> I want to thank you all for tuning in. 
I'm the I am the opener of the episode, and I am the human to die in the episode of Doctor Who. Oh no, this is like one of those uh, one of those like Netflix openings where like the opening is like eight minutes. Long. This was an hour and a half opening. There you go for the episode. Jesus H Christ. Oh, speaking of uh, horrifying, um, that was one thing I loved of the Praxial or mm-hmm. pra- shit. Well- can't- I say eleven, and I can't get the episode title correct. Okay. But the uh, the disease, as it's like working its way up through people, yes, they just explode into dust. Oh yeah, you know what? I mean, I I feel terrible. We should talk about it more. So I love the fact that it was creepy as fuck. I love the birds vibe. Yeah. Going on, I like that people were questioning. What was that? As in Alfred Hitchcock, if those yes. people listening not familiar with The Birds. The Birds. Um, Alfred Hitchcock, that was nice. And I also liked that twist that I did not see coming, where I thought that she was like an evil alien, and really she's like, look, I'm just trying to save us, and yeah. saving us means doing this. And the doctor's like, usually not the case. Right. Oh, that was... I love that line too. That that's that's another favorite for me from thirteen. Just going, I'm a sucker for a scientist. Yes. And then she just teleports out. I'm like, oh, she's shit. like, oh no, I am a sucker for a scientist. <laughs> oh, that line was beautiful. I feel like the master is somewhere. Someone like tells him, sure, sir, should we kill that woman for? Uh, going against your best friend, the doctor. Kill her. Someone should hire her. Yeah, right. Immediately, the next time, it's like, I thought you died. It's like, kind of pulled her out the timeline. She's working for me now till she dies. Oh my god. That? He would, he would too. <laughs> he would. Um, But, uh, yeah, no, that was nice. And I mentioned earlier about the, the kiss between uh, it was Jake and Adam, who I know... Uh, let me see. I know one of them I've seen before. I forgot what show it was, though. And I was like, I know you! Oh, it was Misfits. Let me see which one I saw on Misfits. Uh, do-do-do, do-do-do, do-do-do. But no, but I really like that because it's one of those things where it's like, we've had so many, even if you didn't like the the plot from like a, a you know, a, um, a romantic perspective, because normally Tristan hates romantic subplots. It's like, yeah, why don't, but why can't we have two men having a romantic subplot that people are like, oh, get this off my screen just because it's romantic. Because all the time, I know a lot of people who are like, oh, you know, I don't want, like, they're, if it's something just that's a, like a romantic plot, okay. But if it's a subplot, usually it's just not explored very well. Actually, in a lot of stuff that we review, Tristan, usually romantic subplots are just not explored well. No, and here I would say it was explored. explored that is well. true. No, it definitely was. But I'm saying that even if it wasn't, I'm sitting here and I'm like, we ha- let's just let everyone have a chance here. <laughs> even if it's awful. We've had how many straight awful love plots have we had? Right. Probably over a million. There's a lot of things out there. There's movies, there's TV shows, there's books. And in all different languages, too. Right. There's probably a million bad plots out there. I'm being dead serious here. Yeah. Why yeah. can we not have fucking one on mainstream TV? Right. And a show that is always about being progressive. Some people right. might not like that and might not like that we're saying that. But I can assure you, the show that consistently talks about having a better future and trying to help change the future for the good, where the Doctor works with plenty of different people. First Doctor was a little rough at some time, but he was rough to everybody. And so, and you know, that's the, all of this for Doctor Who. Yeah, Doctor Who was never like, you know what, it's funny. The only time that the Doctor goes, we have to go back into the past the way things were, is because the Doctor wants to change things for the better in the past. Yeah. <laughs> it's never a, let's go to the past and stay there. The Doctor's never like, you know what I love? 1950s America only. Oh, God. No. The Doctor's just like, let's go back into 1950s America because racism sucks. Like, right. that's always been the Doctor's thing. Yeah. You know? I mean, literally, that. uh the uh the daleks are quite literally based off of the nazis yeah the doctor's been fighting the nazis for nearly 60 years both real and dalek damn yeah Yeah. so um (laughs) yeah so it's just so silly that it took this fucking long 2020 to be like yeah let's just have these two dudes here 
Although, I mean, we did have with Bill with 12. That is fair, but I should we should note they did not explore it as much. No, no. And yeah, that's definitely a point to bring up. Like they only really became an item after they were already kind of written out in a way. Yes. And in the middle, they usually I mean, they, you're right, though. I should be fair there. They had the occasional line. But in terms of actually showing a relationship, it's right. one of those things where it would be like if you have, you know, you just like to be fair, when it comes to a companion. If we're looking at it from a companion perspective, usually we only have lines. We don't have companions like dating other people in different timelines. Usually Doctor's like, don't do that. And then Queen Elizabeth is like, oh, Doctor. And he's like, okay, let me explain. I can do that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, but but in this case, it was just one of those things where actually seeing a marriage being you know broken down. It's just like, yeah, we're in 2020. You, you can be married to someone of the same sex. Why can't you be divorced of someone? For, like, it's just it's just something that, like, to me is so obvious. But, like, it's interesting that some people are like, huh. Like, I, thankfully, I did not see any uh, quirky, I'll call them quirky YouTube videos about this episode. But I'm sure they exist. Yeah. But, um, yeah. I, I don't think I heard much about that either. I've heard more about like people being upset if Ruth is like an older doctor, you know, that ruining Hartnell's legacy or something like that. If he's not the first doctor, I'm like that, that doesn't do that at all. What the fuck? Well, guess what? Even if it does, let's just pretend that they're right. You know, who doesn't give a flying fuck about it? <laughs> Hartnell bring yeah. him back from the dead. And I can assure you, he's not going to give a fuck about his legacy. I mean, I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly, he actually disliked doing Doctor Who, at least at first. Right. Because he used to do a lot of war um, period dramas. Right, yeah. So, like, yeah, the dude does not, in my opinion, give a flying fuck. Right, so, so like, it's kind of like Alec Guinness doing Star Wars, being like, I don't give a fuck about this. <laughs> right, yes, Obi-Wan, the original Obi-Wan, yeah. 100% yep. right, yeah. He actually had yeah. letters where he was, like, shitting on it. Yeah, that were I forgot when they were released, but either way, it's still funny nonetheless. Um, anyway, so yes, yeah, so it was um, Matthew McNulty who played. Uh, I want to make sure I get that right. Adam, he was on Misfits, and I loved him on Misfits. Um, he was, and it, you've seen or heard of Misfits, right? Yeah, it, it was that superhero, right? But not superpowers, but not superheroes. He played Seth who was actually really funny because um, Seth was, uh, it, well, I shouldn't, yeah, I shouldn't spoil it. I'm like, because I, I think they built it up as not knowing much about Seth, but uh, he was nothing like this character. So it's like, oh, good range. I like that. Um, so, yeah, no, I, you know, I enjoyed the episode. It's just that I think it felt like a very similar plot. So I don't know, like, I, I don't know how to feel about it happening twice in one season. Like I would love for them have talked about, uh, you know, to talk about another issue on earth that is also of relevance, like of importance. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like with, um, Oh God, what's the other episode name? Ugh. Hotel California. Yeah. Orphan 55. Yeah. With the, the Drax and, um, Wait, oh, I thought you were talking about the... Oh, are they talking about uh, future space Russia? Yes. Yeah, Orphan 55. Am I wrong? No, yeah, I'm right. Yeah. Yeah, no, or yeah, Orphan 55. Um, wow. I'm looking right at it, and you're like, fuck, I can't trust this dude. No, but I meant with <laughs> the... Oh, the villains. Yes. That's... I do, yeah, I do not know jack shit. I believe um, it was the... the hyphen, because she could have solved most of this the dregs dregs there we go okay um i feel like it was in a way to do it, it's attacking the same issue of you know oh, no, i'm just like that but from two different directions in being one is they were based yeah they basically gone to war i think at that point 
No, yeah. I mean, it's it's well, it's tackling different issues from different directions. But what I'm saying is, is that it's the same issue. So it feels like like I understand going to the past twice because it's different timelines. But like, I would feel weird if we saw like New York again this series right across the street from Tesla or something. Do you know what I'm saying? Like when you go to the past, you're teaching lessons about famous people, but you're going to different areas. It was nice to have that Ada Lovelace connection, but Ada wasn't there or they weren't really like heavily referencing Ada. Yeah. You learned about Ada with the Spyfall stuff, uh, specific, well, parts one and two, I would argue. And then in this case, you're learning about Lord Byron and Mary Shelley. Most importantly, I would say Shelley, but, uh, (laughs) but still you're learning about Lord Byron and some of the other people there as well. And so that's very interesting and how they, you know, both in a way connected, but not really. But I feel like this one, like Orphan 55, was very direct. And I, you know, I had my feelings on it when we talked about it. But now with Praxius as well, it it also feels maybe not as direct, if you will, uh, compared to Orphan 55. But with how direct, you know, let, like, let's say it like this, right? If each one has like a, okay, this one's going to go up to 100%. This one has to go up to 100%. Orphan 55 already went up to like 120 <laughs> Because it yeah. tipped over. So in this case, it's like with Praxius, I'm like, whoa, we already got 120. Like, But also with Praxius, you know, it, the end hasn't already come for the Earth. And Orphan 55 is a different version of Earth where everything's already fucked and there's no way to stop it. Well, I mean, it's not a different version. It is the Earth. It can be changed, but as far as they're concerned, that will happen to the Earth. Well, I mean, the Doctor even says this is a possible outcome for the Earth. Right, but it's not a different Earth. It's not like it's a separate Earth, like, timeline-wise. Like, it technically can be the same Earth. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, but that Earth isn't written in stone yet. So none of them are. It is absolutely no. our Earth. I mean... No, but I'm saying none of none of Earth's outlines are written in stone, ever. But what I'm yeah. saying is that we wouldn't say that when the Doctor traveled to the end of the Earth with Rose that it was a different timeline. Yeah, well, that was the end of everything. Fair. I always forget that. Yeah, um, that's the universe. Right, that was the universe. Um, but, yeah, Praxius is a little bit different in saying that, yeah, there's a, the problem with plastic pollution on Earth, and something else is feeding off of that. Yeah, that's fair. I just think that it's telling the same story, sort of. Not the same story, I'm sorry, the same theme, which I think is a great theme, yeah. but... It's just twice in one series. Also because they weren't split apart, which I'm happy they weren't split apart via like a, you know, a three month gap or something. But when yeah. something isn't split apart with that gap, you might see that more closely. Like, you know, remember when we used to have plots that were somewhat similar, but they were split apart by like six months uh, during the 11th Doctor's reign? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like it's kind of like that. It's different, but it's only... Uh, it's only separated by like three weeks. So it's not that different. I feel like I, for me, I feel like they were different enough and granted I'm, I'm from a perspective that that message can't be stated enough. So, but that's, that's, you know, coming from me. Well, no, that is a message that cannot be stated enough. But again, my, you know, my thoughts last time were, are the people who are in power actually listening? And that's, I'm not going to say any more on that because we ranted far too much on that. But if you want to listen to the last episode, guys, I'll have it linked somewhere. Or if you're watching this, listen to this rather on our um, on our um, a Podbean, which is those guys radio, you'll find it a few weeks back. Um, but yeah, so it's, you're right, though. It's not a message that it's a message that cannot be stated enough. But I just feel a little I don't want to say that I'm pessimistic. I just, um, you know, it's it just. Yeah, no, that's my job. Yeah, right? Um, Oh, it was so interesting, by the way, that uh, it seems like twice this season they've accidentally, like, tackled real-life issues, but not ones that are obvious. Like, when you talk about global warming or climate change, that one's been an issue for the last 20 years. That's not new. 20, 30 years. That's not new. But talking about specifically, like, oh, no, there's a virus in Hong Kong. And it's spreading and it can't be cured. I'm like, I'm sweating. <laughs> it's like that um, that Key and Peel. I think it was uh, it was Key. No, it wasn't Keegan. Um, it was Jordan Peel. 
where he's just sweating that meme that gets sent around that was me yeah, right. oh my god during praxius i was like oh oh and of course obviously they wrote this so you know so like not only wrote and filmed like this was it came out feb 2nd 2020 but it was done like six seven months ago yeah so like obviously it was not you know uh it in no way is referencing that but it's just like oh god we're in a simulation fuck we're in a simulation <laughs> fuck the program fuck it's getting too much it's getting too real it's getting too fake real um and then what was the next one? There was another one where I was like, oh, no. I could swear it was in The Haunting. They said something. And I was like, oh, my goodness. I can't remember what it was. Um, side note, wasn't it funny that Ruth was a travel guide? Uh, yeah. That was my first clue after being spoiled. I was like, you know, I may have been spoiled by the official Doctor Who YouTube channel, but I think there's something with this travel guide. Yeah. <laughs> Who wants to actually be a travel guide? Only aliens. That's the theme of that episode. That's the that's the moral. <laughs> um. Oh, I did like the fact that um. Oh, the couple, the cop, out of the couple in Praxius, um, that he got saved at the end. Yes, I was like, oh no! I was like, please don't, please don't. Yeah. I was like oh, are they really going to kill the first couple that they show like this? I'm like, ah. I mean, honestly, though, I mean, they've killed other couples, so I wouldn't be opposed to it. Yeah, right. I'm like, well, couples have totally died super hard on Doctor Who. So that, yeah. that's nothing new. No, yeah, it definitely is a weird trade-off. It's like, do you do you do that and make it seem like you're killing off this first character? Or do you go, well, other couples die on Doctor Who all the time, but other couples also live? It's always a toss-up. Right. But so, I, it was in a way that it would have been like he is saving the planet with what he's doing. No, and I just I love that again with these last few episodes. It's like, sorry, Doctor, you can't always win. Yeah. Oh, hey, we always won. Fuck. It was nice but, at the uh, end of that one that they got the team win. And like, well, granted, the one other researcher on the beach totally got eaten by those birds. And I was like, oh. And that woman doing that vlog. I love that, by the way, that they turned like, you know, back in the day. Uh, maybe like 10 years ago, 15 years ago, even when YouTube was just first starting up, there would still be people being like, oh my God, don't you like know me? I'm like this reality TV show star. And like in this episode, in practice, it was like, oh my God, don't you know me? I'm like on YouTube. <laughs> that's But that's just how the culture has changed. And I'm happy that it's like, thank you for fucking embracing that, Doctor Who. Right. If you're going to be stuck on Earth, by the way, funny story, they've been stuck on Earth the whole season. Have you noticed? Because I haven't. Huh. Yeah. yeah. How crazy is that, right? You could argue the doctor went into a random neural network thing, but like she was on Earth the rest of the time, as were the companions. Orphan 55 was technically on Earth because space Russia, or I should say future Russia, but I like saying space Russia better. It's funnier. Um, uh, Nikola Tesla on Earth, Fugitive of the Jadoon on Earth, Praxius on Earth. Can you hear me? Different like parts of earth but on a different timelines but on or you know time frames but on earth and the haunting on earth how funny is that but when the plots are actually this good i'm not gonna that's why i really enjoyed the third doctor and people were like oh you stuck on earth and i'm like yeah but if it's good then who cares so you know i i've said before like i do want the doctor to go to like strange and new and interesting places but like yeah if the plots are this good i'm i'm good especially the first series where i mean i think they were earth heavy if i remember correctly but like you know you were trying to introduce everyone to new things i really did enjoy matt smith's first series where he was just traveling the universe though that was nice and to be fair they went to uh the ghost monument last season it wasn't just different parts and kerblam oh god and yeah. uh witch finders no witch finders was the past it takes you away was the present quote unquote question mark um yeah the battle of Ranscore av club Kalos. uh that was not on earth resolution was in sheffield so i'm pretty sure that's on earth 95 percent sure sheffield is part of earth unless brexit went that far oh, but i'm pretty sure it didn't <laughs> um, 
and uh, yeah, Woman Who Fell to Earth. I think that one was also on Earth. Right. But again, if they get there, if Sheffield gets, gets what they're looking for, I don't know, maybe they'll, they won't be a part of Earth anymore. <laughs> it's not just Sheffield. Um, but anyway, I don't know what else to say. I think we can wrap this one up unless there's anything, uh, a, a, a poignant point that you would like to make. Anything? Um, yeah, I think we hit just about everything. Excellent. Hit, yeah, we, um, we, yeah, we got it. Yeah, uh, fun batch of episodes. Um, I've definitely been enjoying this season. Um, can't wait to see how the hell they wrap this all up. Well, I'm hoping they don't. Now, this might seem odd. I'm hoping that, while, while it makes sense that they wrap up Jack because he is with the Cybermen, I'm really hoping they save Ruth. That was one of my issues that I had with Can You Hear Me? I thought they, like I mentioned earlier, I thought they were saving, I, like, her, uh, the, the, the immortal that we didn't know was an immortal, I thought they were saving her for a future plot because I was like, wow, there's so many interesting plot threads. I can't see how these, you know, can't wait to see how these come together. And then they finish it in that episode. So I'm hoping they don't bring back Ruth and try to finish that all up in this two-parter because that's going to be, I'm not saying it can't be done, but it's way too much to fit. Cybermen, uh, whatever's going to be happening in the future because of these Cybermen, this war, then Jack, and then Ruth, and of course the Doctor. And I'm assuming it's not going to tie into Gallifrey at all. I'm assuming they're leaving that for next season. Because, I mean, I thought, because they introduced it in the first half, in the first two-parter, they were going to conclude something with Gallifrey. Yeah. Oh my god, what if the Master, not this version of the Master, the Master, you know, it's still this um, uh, regeneration, but it's the Master, like, maybe, a you know, years before he met this version of the Doctor. Right. What if the Master meets her and then uses the Cybermen to destroy Gallifrey? Huh. It's just... It's just dumb enough to work. <laughs> um... That's what the master said when he came up with the plan. <laughs> well, it's weird. I feel like I don't know what like I feel like the master would use an army of Cybermen, or he was just mad enough to go Anakin on every single person, person by person. Yeah. Uh, no, that, that seems like what they were going for. It did. It did. Yeah. But um, but no, I'm really curious because yeah, I thought they were gonna wrap up. I didn't think the Cybermen... I thought the Cybermen were going to be in the two-parter. Then I was like, oh, are they going to be, I guess, involved in the season finale? And it's, and we haven't had any mention of Gallifrey, which, I mean, they've been busy. And also yeah. they've been making sure to not have her just kind of dwell on the TARDIS for a bit. Because when they do, then that question kind of has to arise. Yeah. But thankfully, this past episode, at least, they had them show up immediately at the house. I love the way they did it, but they had them show up immediately... To be like, great, let's not mention Gallifrey. Let's get a week off on that. And then maybe we'll bring it back up in the two-parter. Maybe we won't. I mean, again, I'm okay if there are certain plot threads that extend to next series. And I'm hoping if it, if not just Gallifrey, Ruth extends to next series. Because, like, legit, how can they really wrap this up in an yeah, hour and a half? It feels like we've got big events. And, like, I get it. It's a two-parter. But at the same time, like, you've got a lot of shit going on to wrap up, even in a two-parter. If you continue Ruth, that's fine. But if you try to say this is the end of Ruth... Yeah. What are you doing? So, I'm hoping they don't do that. And it sucks because I do want... Like, I love Ruth so much from what I've seen that it would be nice for her to come back and be the Doctor proper in our timeline in our show... But, like, I'm hoping they don't, like, this isn't their way of just spoiling the next Doctor. And, like, somehow she lost her memories of being 13 and she's actually the 14th or something. Right. And the Time Lords are just fine or something. I'm hoping they don't yeah. do that. <laughs> what, what would be interesting, and I think people would definitely disagree, I think you even would disagree... Um, if there was an issue where for some reason or another, maybe, you know, the actors want to pursue other things. I'm talking about in general actors who are in Doctor Who. They want to pursue other things or they want to take a bit of a break for one reason or another. It would be interesting to follow, let's say, one series of Doctor Who via, let's say, you know, uh, uh, with Jodie Whittaker's timeline. 
And then another series with Dr. Ruth's timeline. I believe her name is Joe Martin, the actress that uh, plays her. It would be interesting to follow both of those timelines separately per series. If just to give a one team a little bit of a break, but continue Doctor Who. Yeah. Because I will admit, it does feel a little odd if we're going to have, and it's not just the Whitaker thing, I'm talking about in general, if we're going to uh, have, for some reason or another, have them take a break every two years. So it's like, ah. Uh, yeah. You know, I would rather, not that it would affect the quality of the show, because if you have a different team working on everything, but I think it would be interesting if they somehow were able to you know continue ruth's story or the story if she is from an alternate timeline or alternate universe uh through another type of not even spin-off just like this is doctor who but this series we're focusing on ruth or the adventures of whatever the fuck is going on in this universe because you can also stretch your your arms a little bit you don't have to be beholden to this canon right it would be interesting i'm not saying people would enjoy it i'm not saying you would enjoy it but it would be interesting to say the least Mm. especially if Whitaker and the crew are going to be taken not a year off but like they can't do this on a yearly basis yeah for one reason or another and there's this gap every other year right I would like some who even if it's just a special I would like some who right yeah no I, I agree I would too either way though I think this is when we wrap things up yeah okay yeah ending this ending this on a fun note uh shack fu a legend reborn is five dollars now via best buy what the f- what? this game I, I was scrolling through twitter while you were talking this game came out <laughs> june 5th 2018 i follow a twitter account called cheap ass gamer who takes yeah. money out of my wallet whenever i see a tweet no uh no you remember shack fu we uh Satish and i played it the initial the original version on the super nintendo there's other ports but we played it on super nintendo we played it on our those guys play channel for uh okay, wow you're tying this in oh oh no it wasn't even a tie-in it's just the fact that like i saw that the the sequel shack fu a legend reborn that like i wanted to buy but i never had the chance to is now five dollars i think five dollars is when i pulled the trigger tristan <laughs> It was twenty, and now it's five dollars. Why would I not get this? I'm ordering this. I said we're ending it on a fun note. This <clears throat> is the note, Tristan. Shaq Fu: A Legend Reborn. Jesus Christ! Is five dollars, brand new. So we have fun here. Um, we we're wrapping this one up. Thank you all so much for listening in. As always, if you're watching this through our Those Guys on the Radio YouTube channel, thank you so much. If you're listening to this through our pod being Those Guys Radio, thank you as well. And if you've downloaded this through our Patreon, patreon.com slash TG Productions, thank you as well. So tune in two weeks from now when we talk about Doctor Who series 12 episodes 9 to 10 on another episode of Doctor Who Wednesday. But remember that we have a lot of other shows that we do. We're actually updating our backlogged stuff on our Podbean. So there's a lot of stuff there that's uh, coming out on the daily. But we still have our weekly brand new episodes. So those are also fun as well. I can even give you guys, I'm going to give them spoilers, Tristan. (gasps) <gasps> no, mm-hmm. Mac, don't. Next week... you become the very thing you swore to destroy. Next week, we're talking about a Toonami tie-in event. A TIE called Toonami the Forge. Yes. We did not review that before the new year. Everything <sighs> is... This is very apt propos for Doctor Who. We totally did that in 2020. Yes. Wait. <laughs> My timeline isn't matching up with yours, Matt. Something's wrong here. (laughs) On that note, we gotta go. So, love you all. Take care. Tune in next time. See ya. Uh, Breaking TARDIS noises.